The following program contains material that is not suitable for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Live from the Community Media Center Marin, it's Marin Sanity. All right, hello, Marin Sanity. How are you doing tonight? All right. All right. Marin's kind of an insane place, right? Isn't it kind of insane? Well, at least you're not, you know, every, what? No? Everybody here from Marin? Anybody yeah. here from, yeah? Well, at least you're not Petaluma. <laughs> Anybody here from Petaluma? Oh, I guess that's a yes. Anybody here from Petaluma? Yeah? Woo! <laughs> well, at least you're not Ronard Park. <laughs> Anybody here from Ronard Park? I think some of these other comedians are from Ronard Park. I'll get it later. Well, you people from Ronard Park, you're on your own. All right. Um, it's kind of a big crowd. What is it like? Eight, nine, 10, 11 people. Wow, big crowd. It's so big, you make it look like it's 12. <laughs> You know, here, I'm from the East Coast, and um, people back there, they go, uh, they call me Antony. You know, in Brooklyn, they go, hey, Antony, Antony, how you doing? Antony, how you doing? And they care when they ask how I am. Not like here, they say, how are you? And nobody really cares, right? You know, right, Marin? All right, silence. <laughs> nobody says anything. You're either thinking about it or you don't agree, right? Anyway, they go, Antony, how you doing? I go, I'm good, and I feel like I'm opening up a little bit if I don't feel good. And they go, Antony, where are you from? They go, where are you from? And I go, well, I'm from West New York. And they go, West, how west? West west side of Manhattan? And I go, no, west than more west than that. And I go, they go, what's that? And I say, New Jersey. <laughs> um, so, you know, my dad's from the East Coast too. And I remember when I first started comedy a long time ago, and I gave it up, he goes, uh, which I probably should have, right? Anyway, oh. anyway, no, oh, I like the little awe. Thank you. He goes, You gonna do comedy? You ain't going to college? You ain't gonna go to college? You don't wanna learn nothing? Yeah. What are you gonna be a bum? You know, my dad has an opinion about pretty much everything, you know, pretty much everything. And he has an opinion about the United Airlines thing. Have you watched that? Did you watch that thing, really, the whole thing about that poor man drag? So my father tells it like this. He goes, he goes, he goes, that poor man, it's United Airlines' fault all the way, completely. That poor man, they dragged him, they dragged him down the aisle. You know, I didn't like that man either, but you can't treat Kim Jong-un that way anyway. You can't, you can't treat him that way. And I go, Dad, it's not Kim Jong-un. And he goes, it looked like Kim Jong-un to me. They all look the same. Not the same. And I go, okay, well, whatever. I, that's so bad, right? So anyway, he continues and he goes, yeah, I, you know what the real problem was? It's with the airline. They offered those people $200 to get off that plane. Nobody took it. I would have taken the $200, right? You would have taken it too, right? Yeah. Okay, $400, nobody took it. $600, $800, $1,000, they didn't take it. You know, they lost, you know why they didn't take it? Anybody know why? You know where that plane was from? It was in Louisville, Kentucky. That's where it was. Anybody been to Louisville? Mm -hmm. Really? Would you go back? No, Louisville is a very strange place. Usually when you go someplace, they go, hello, welcome to Detroit. And you go, oh, great. You go, welcome to San Francisco. Great. In Louisville, they go, they go, ha, welcome to LaVille. <laughs> and, and I go, what? What'd you say? They go, welcome to LaVille. And I go, well, I must be in the wrong place. I'm here. I'm supposed to go in Louisville. Yeah, that's right. It's LaVille. And I go, I go, how the hell do you get LaVille out of this L-O-U-I-S-V-I-L-L-E? How do you get that out of there? And plus, I'm giving you a little bit of slack here. It should pr be pronounced Louisville. <laughs> Not Louisville. Well, welcome to LaVille. That's it. So United Airlines, what they should have done was never have an airline, never have a flight going to Louisville, ever, right? Those people would have taken the money somewhere else, no problem, and now Kim Jong-un wouldn't have owned the airline, which now he's going to own, right? Anyway, so sometimes when I, get, when I get on stage, people say to me, oh my God, do you like work out? Do you work out? Really? I don't know comedians that work out. Usually they don't work out. You work out? And I go... I go, no, I have a gland problem, but I wish you wouldn't bring it up. <laughs> you know, and they go, well, I guess, what? That's a gland problem, right? So anyway, so usually when I ask people how they are, I go, how you doing? What do people say a lot? They usually go, good or fine, and that's it, right? In the East Coast, we don't like it until there's some kind of problem. Because when you say good, the conversation's over, you know? But sometimes if you don't feel well, you can get away with saying fine. You know, most people, when they say fine, they go, fine. And you know they're not fine. Right? So fine can stand for effed up, insecure, neurotic, and empty. All right? Anybody here from Tiburon? Any Ross holes? No? Oh, you like that, right? I guess that means a no. It would be 
fine would mean effed up, insecure, neurotic, and entitled. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, how are you, how's your evening going so far? Good? Good, good. Not so good? Yeah, really good? Well, we got a couple more comedians coming at you soon. Um, who's your favorite comedian? Who's your favorite comedian? Have any idea? No? What's her face? What's her face? What's, What's face? her face? That's a good name. What's her face? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Well, I used to like uh, somebody. I used to like Bill O'Reilly with the sound off, but I guess he's off the air now. Anyway, we have a really good show up for you now, <laughs> and our first performer is a veteran of parenthood and marriage who sifts through the seemingly mundane to offer humorous observational gems to you, the willing, and hopefully drinking audience. <laughs> Please welcome Casey Williams. Anthony Durante, everybody. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Yeah. There you go. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Lovely. Right. Lovely to see you. This is great. No, I am I am a veteran of marriage because I am in the middle of a divorce. Oh. Yeah, that's right. No, you didn't know we were gonna have like a little share session here tonight. Oh, it's great. It's, I highly recommend it. It's great. No, I I am a little broken up about it though. I'm a little of course, of course, because I I hate paperwork. <laughs> There's so much paperwork, you guys. So much. Like, listen, you guys, I can barely figure out Safeway Monopoly. Like, <laughs> paperwork is not, I'm a giant child, is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's 2017. I feel like we should be able to get married, uh, divorced online. <laughs> right? right? You should just be able to log in, click a box, prove you're not a robot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you're done, right? It should be like, uh, like changing your relationship status on Facebook. <laughs> I, uh, I Googled, I made the mistake of Googling how to get a divorce in California, and uh, the ad bots got me. <laughs> so now, every time I go online, I just get like ads for pizza delivery, <laughs> <laughs> booze, lots of booze, gym memberships. <laughs> It's like, hey, do you want to get hammered by yourself in your underwear? Yeah. Pretend you're going to get back in shape again? Visit us today at allshowher.com. Yeah. I got the she'll be sorry package, you guys. It comes with a free tattoo. Yeah. Now nah, it's fine. She's great. She's absolutely great. Everything's good. We get along really well. Uh, not necessarily with each other. Yeah. But no, it's great. She's uh, you know, she was uh, super supportive. Takes a takes a strong woman to support all this. Yeah. Like no, literally like strong woman. Like look at me, I'm a monster. Like <laughs> mi missionary position is like Ted Ted Danson and Creep Show. Like if you can hold your breath. <laughs> that was hot. Sorry. That was a 1982 <laughs> timely movie reference, you guys. Sorry about that. No, she's great. She's absolutely great. She, uh, she, she used to help me write jokes all the time. Uh, she's super supportive of the comedy thing. She would say things like, um, if you say that on stage, I'm going to wait till you're in the shower, and I'm going to throw the hair dryer in. <laughs> that's pretty specific, right? I mean, that's, like, I don't think that was the first time she thought of that. Like... She's a spicy woman, is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> spicy lady. Like, she's, well, she's half Mexican, right? She's half Jewish. Uh, so she makes amazing tamales, uh, but she makes them with matzo <laughs> and guilt. <laughs> spicy, spicy. I like that. I know, I know. Shocking, right? Like, guy is doing stand-up comedy on public access television on Monday night. Likes a little dysfunctionality in his life. <laughs> but... Oh. but but no, I like it. It's exciting. It keeps things exciting. Like, I like to come home, like, not knowing if there's going to be candles, and soft music, you know, and a romantic dinner, or all my shit's going to be outside <laughs> in a pile on fire. All right, so I wasn't sure if I was going to do this. It's a little mean, you guys. Is it okay if I get a little mean? You guys okay yeah. with it? Like, you guys okay with mean? Yeah? All right. All right. So, first of all, do any of you guys have roommates? Anybody have roommates? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. All right. So, here's the thing. I do a lot of comedy. I, I actually I produce comedy shows. Um, and one thing that you may not know about comedians is a lot of them have roommates. 
Yeah. So I, I don't know if that's like commentary on the high price of housing in the Bay Area or like the burgeoning gold mine that is stand-up comedy, <laughs> but they all have roommates. There's a lot of roommate stories, a lot of roommate problems. They're always talking to me at the, about their roommates. And I'm like, listen, you think you got problems? I got two roommates. I was married to one of them. And the other one is 15. <laughs> yeah. So I just like, I like to spend a lot of time in the garage, you know, just kind of like looking around at my hopes and dreams, <laughs> just trying to remember what it used to be like to be right. <laughs> and my son, he's 15. Like he, he loves it when I'm wrong. Like it's his favorite thing. He's just constantly like fact checking me on his phone. He's like, oh, you're wrong again, dad. I'm like, yeah, you're right, son. I totally blew that obscure baseball stat that no one gives a shit about. <laughs> I was thinking about another stat, son. I was thinking about uh, how you wet the, wet the bed till you were 12. How about that stat? I told you it was mean. Sorry. It's not my fault, though. It's like, listen, he, what he does is he tries to show me up in front of all his friends, right? He'll get all his, a pack of teenagers is like the worst thing ever. Like, he'll get all his friends around, and, and he'll be like, my dad said that Tony Stark was in seven Marvel movies, but if you count his cameo in The Incredible, like, who gives a shit? <laughs> but I'll get him back, though. I'll get him back. I'll come in there. I'll be like, hey, buddy, got those uh, Taylor Swift tickets you were looking yeah. for. <laughs> Front row, pal. He's like, shut up. I don't even like her. You're embarrassing me. No, you know what's embarrassing? Going to Safeway at 10 o'clock on a Friday night to buy pull-ups for an 11-year-old. <laughs> you ever been to Safeway at 10 o'clock on a Friday? Everybody's all dressed up. They got their booze. They're like ready to go out and party. I'm like standing there with a giant <laughs> chub pack of pull-ups. <laughs> Trying to like cover up the extra large size, so maybe they think I got a little one at home. Like, oh, <laughs> oh the shame shorts. Uh, I knew it was gonna be a problem. Listen, I knew it was gonna be a problem because when he was, when he was like about five or six, right? He would he would wait until like the last possible minute to go to the bathroom. You know, he'd like he'd start doing like the the pee pee dance. You know, he'd be like boogieing, and it seems so simple, right? You gotta pee, you go to the bathroom, right? But he. Was, it's like he thought he was going to miss something, you know, and then he'd start getting the chills. <laughs> <sighs> and it, it, I don't know what he thought he was going to miss, but I was like, hey, listen. And then finally I have to yell at him. I'm like, go to the bathroom, dude. Right? So then he'd get up, he'd go to the bathroom, and then he'd come out. And I'd be like, you missed it. While you were in there, Spider-Man came by with cupcakes and balloons. Why would you miss cupcakes and balloons? All right, listen, I'm Casey Williams. I know, I'm super mean. You guys are Marin. I've really enjoyed our time together. Thank you very much. All right, Casey, thank you. All right, our next up is a San Francisco native who studied copywriting in the Academy of Art University. Wow, and uses those skills to create vivid and hilarious jokes. Please put your hands together more than once for Juan Medina. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Give it up one more time for your wonderful host, Anthony. Anthony, isn't he wonderful? He's wonderful. You know, Anthony's a really talented guy, but he doesn't like to brag about himself. So I have to brag for him. Little known secret about Anthony, ex-collegiate athlete. Wow. It's pretty impressive, right? Yeah. When you think about how few people ever compete athletically at the college level, but Anthony did. Because back in college, Anthony used to wrestle with his sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> and he took me to the mat a couple of times. <laughs> Matt was the name of a mutual friend of ours. Oh, he had a tender touch. There you go. My name is Juan. You can call me Juancho. Um, you can call me Juancho. Born and raised in San Francisco, which means I live in Oakland now. <laughs> That's how that works, yeah. <laughs> Living in Oakland's pretty awesome, but it does come with its own set of unique circumstances. For example, my apartment is haunted, but since it's in Oakland, it's not haunted by your traditional white lady ghost. <laughs> it's haunted by the ghost of a sassy black woman. <laughs> a little bit different than your traditional white lady ghost. I'll give you an example. The other night, about 2 a.m., I got up to use the restroom and I was walking down the hall, 
and I heard the ghost. She introduced herself for the first time. So this is what it was like, okay? So imagine it's 2 a.m., you get up to use the restroom, you don't turn on the lights, right? Because you don't want to wake anyone else up. You're walking down the, I was walking down the hallway, and this is what I heard. So I'm walking down the hallway, from behind me, this is what I hear, okay? Sassy black lady ghost, right? <laughs> Boo. 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 Motherfucker, I said boo. <laughs> turn your simple ass around. I turn around, and there before me was the beautiful and voluptuous specter of an African-American woman. She had her right hand planted firmly on her hip, as sassy as she wanted to be. She looked me dead in the eye and said, oh, what, boy? You ain't scared of me? And I said, respectfully, no. And she said, well, good. Because ain't no one trying to scare your goofy ass anyway. <laughs> and then she disappeared into an old issue of Jet Magazine. <laughs> Never to be seen again. I'm from San Francisco. So uh, the thing about San Francisco is uh, it's like a very rich political activist history in it. People are very just like progressive. It's crazy. And uh, the way that that's manifested in me is that I... Uh, actively enjoy challenging heteronormative paradigms, uh, which is a fancy way of saying, I uh, occasionally do gay shit, you know, gay stuff. <laughs> Not super gay stuff, like have sex with a guy or fall in love and then get married, but other gay stuff, I'll explain. You see, when I was growing up uh, in the mission, I grew up, I listened to hip hop and Mexican music, but a lot of my closest friends, they would listen to punk music and metal music, and I, and, and I loved it but I wasn't really allowed to participate. And one of the cool things that they used to do was they used to paint their nails black. And I always wanted to paint my nails black. I'm like, man, I look so badass. But my dad's like, Juancho, you cannot do that, Juancho. <laughs> because if you do that, you will be gay. <laughs> you will be a puto. <laughs> you will be a joto. <laughs> but good news, recently my dad died. So now <laughs> I can do whatever the hell I want with my body. And the other day, I, I painted my nails black, and I decided, hey, I'm gonna walk through my old neighborhood, right? Tw down 24th Street, which is in the middle of like, that's like the Chicano neighborhood, right? And I'm walking down 24th Street, and I'm walking by all these cholos that I grew up with, and they see my nails painted, and man, did they let me have it. Oh. Yeah. They call me every slur, every pejorative you could, think, you could imagine. And uh, the further I walked down 24th Street, the, the sadder I got, the more pain I felt in my heart. And when I got, by the time I got home, I felt so sad that uh, I wanted to make myself feel better. So I decided to give myself a stranger. And for those of you who don't know what a stranger is, you're welcome when this joke is done. I'm telling you, you're in for a treat. <laughs> a stranger is when you sit on your least dominant hand until it becomes so numb that when you pleasure yourself with it, it feels like a stranger is doing it. <laughs> All right? So anyway, here's the point. The point is I'm there, I'm pleasuring myself, you know, I'm crying, the tears are lubricating, and I'm just thinking about, <laughs> I'm thinking about all the terrible stuff. And they said all these things like, man, you're, you're not a man. You, you're gay. You're feminine. All this stuff. And I was right. And I'm thinking about that. And I'm looking down. And I see this beautiful, delicate, manicured, nail-painted hand on my penis. And I'm like, yo, there's nothing gay about this at all. <laughs> this is like the manliest way I could masturbate. <laughs> It's gotten to the point where I'm convinced that if you're masturbating and you're a straight man and your nails aren't painted, that's gay. <laughs> right. My, I love superheroes. I'm a big fan of superheroes. Re grew up reading comic books. Favorite superhero has to be Superman. Arguably the most powerful superhero in all of comic books. Also, arguably the whitest superhero there is. <laughs> Superman is so white that when he's not fighting crime, he has a good paying desk job. I mean, think about that. The man of steel has benefits. He's indestructible. What does he need with medical? Just your typical entitled straight white man using up resources he doesn't need. I know, this is, this is not gonna work, Marin. You guys, you guys deserve your benefits here. But in San Francisco, they do. Anyway, my other favorite superhero is Batman. I love Batman, but I don't think Batman is actually white. I think Batman's Mexican. Here's why. 
Always run, always running around wearing a tool belt. <laughs> Only superhero that brings his son to work. <laughs> All right? Every other superhero, Superman flies into a crime scene. The Flash runs real fast into the crime scene. What does Batman do? Pull up in a black lowrider. <laughs> All right? And that's not a superhero outfit. You're not gonna that he's the only superhero that is a luchador outfit. <laughs> anyway, you know, it's I've had so much fun. Thank you so much for listening to me tonight. I hope you have a great continue having a great time. Thank you very much. All right, a big round of applause for Juan. All right. Thank God I took my nail polish off before this evening. Tonight's headliner approaches comedy like a spoken word memoir, all the embarrassing life moments that lurk in a place that only stand-up or therapy sessions can reveal. Let's hear it for Steve Osborne. Keep it going for your host, Anthony. Hi. Give it up for Anthony's arms. My goodness, aren't they something? Yeah, he mentioned he worked out. Like, I think we needed that little bit of info. Yeah, you know, fun fact, uh, before he worked out, that hat used to fit. Isn't that cool? That's good. That's cool. That's good. Uh, we're, are we all local? We're all uh, Marin folks? Yeah? Yeah, you know what? You're a crowd. You can go ahead and make some noise. You all just kind of nod. I like that. That's no. The camera will pan to you eventually. That's perfect. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. No, no. I like, I like uh, performing here in uh, San Rafael, as uh, I just happened to call it. Uh, this is great. So, uh, you know, performing in the Bay Area, performing in uh, San Francisco, it's, it's very similar. This is a very similar vibe here in San Rafael as the San Francisco, mostly because um, parking. Parking is, is an issue here. Now, like in, in San Francisco, you can't uh, get parking because all the spots are filled up. But in here, you know, in San Rafael, you can't find parking because everybody in the crosswalk is moving at the speed of white privilege. You know, so it's just a little bit harder to get from one space to another because everybody's just kind of wandering around like, oh, look, there's an infinity scarf I don't have yet. Very good. Ah, no, this is great. Um, traveling up from the North Bay up in Santa Rosa. Anybody ever come up to Santa Rosa area? No? Yeah, one guy saying no. Yeah, again, just, just nods and, and, and that's perfect. Uh, yeah, so uh, we were uh, so coming on the way up with my wife, and uh, we see those, those digital road signs that like, tell you all the important things, you know, like slow for the cone zone, click it or tick it, don't shake your baby, all the important things that you're supposed to know as you're driving. This one I thought was especially clever and maybe a little too wordy. It said, be alert, pedestrians don't wear armor. Have you seen this one? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's like suddenly now, I guess Caltrans is bringing in people with creative <laughs> writing degrees. I think that's great. I think, it, and it, for me, that's perfect because I have a creative writing degree and I can't wait for the day that I pen my first digital road sign. It's gonna say, <laughs> Don't blow it. Roadhead doesn't count as hands-free. And I think it's cute. I think it's adorable. I think the kids are going to love it. Oh, no, this is good. Uh, doing a show here in, in Marin County. Uh, it's lovely because, you know, when you're doing comedy, you don't know where you're going to end up. Uh, like, you know, recently I, I did a show uh, at a bowling alley in Ukiah because I'm crushing it <laughs> right now. <laughs> it's perfect right where I want to be. Uh, anybody been to Ukiah, California? Yeah, of course, because they don't deliver meth. You got to go to the source. You know what I mean? You got to get out there. I like that. No, I don't know what it is. Whenever I go to Ukiah, for some reason, I always have to poop. Like, I have to poop really bad. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't even know if there's a bit in here. It's just when I'm driving, as soon as I cross, like, county line, like, all that just, I guess the fumes of sadness and inbreeding just sort of push everything just right out of me. And uh, anyway, this one particular night, I was headed to the show, and it was really bad. Like, I was sweating. I was standing up while I was driving. I was crowning. You know, it was one of those things where, where I just didn't know if I was going to make it, and so I'm panicking. But then I saw a sign that gave me a little bit of hope. It was a Kohl's sign, you know, like the, the, you know, the, the store where you can get clothes and whatnot. So I went there, and I saw the Kohl's sign, so I pulled off uh, on the exit because I was like, this is perfect because either A, they have a working bathroom, or B, they have pants, so I'm totally covered. I'm totally covered either way. So I pull in, 
And uh, I go to open the door, and it's locked. And I'm freaking out because I'm like, oh, this is it. This is how I die. I die right here in the Ukiah Coles parking lot. This is how it happens. I'm just going to just poop myself into, into just oblivion. But then I saw a little bit further in the distance, several blocks down, was a Walmart sign. Anybody ever been to the Ukiah Walmart? I'll tell you right now, the Ukiah Walmart is the Ukiah of Walmarts, okay? <laughs> It's exactly what you'd expect. Look, I don't want to get political, but if you believe all lives matter, you've never been to the Ukiah Walmart, okay? <laughs> they do not. Anyway, long story short, I was able to take care of my business. Uh, other, yeah, I mean, okay, so a uh, little bit about me. Uh, I'm married, been married for 20 years. Yeah, that's uh, pretty exciting. Uh, in addition to that, I have a 20-year-old son. Do the math. Um, I have a 16-year-old daughter and a 15-year-old vasectomy, but I love all three the same. You know, no favorites there. Uh, anybody have adult children here? I mean, you guys look like a fairly... Yeah, you got a couple of... Yeah, adult children. So, okay, anybody have, like, a teenage or adult son by any chance? No? Oh, you got one? Okay, for anybody that's ever come into contact with these uh, creatures, they... I'll, I'll tell you right now, they stink. They smell. They just have this... This yeah. funk that emanates. Like when they open up their bedroom door, it's just this like smell of like old fruit and jizz <laughs> somehow. It just sort of just pours right out. It's just awful. And, uh, and so, you know, we were trying to convince our son that maybe he should clean his room, you know, because, but you can't treat him like he's a kid anymore because he's an adult. So you kind of have to treat him, you know, not so much as a child, but as like a roommate slash tenant slash squatter. You know, you have to be able to <laughs> relate to them in a different way. And so we're like, hey, Meg, could you do us a solid and maybe clean your room a little bit? Yeah, man, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Like, no, no, cool. It'd be, no, it'd just be really great if you could, you know, just help us out and Stop lowering our property value for a little bit. That'd be great if you just do that. Yeah, man, I'll get to it. I'm real busy today. I'm like, I know you're not busy working, but that's fine. That's cool. I get it. And so eventually my wife's like, look, it's our house. You know, it's our property. We can do whatever we want. So we just go in there and we clean it. Fine. So uh, this is when he's about 19, by the way. So we're cleaning his, his room. In the process of pulling out all the trash, we found two empty bottles of watermelon-flavored vodka. Yeah. and one empty bottle of raspberry-flavored vodka. And that is a hell of a way to find out that your son is gay. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like you come talk to me, you know? We're progressive. We're bay I voted for her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, you know, my daughter, she's a different situation. You know, she's 16 years old. So, you know, she's, it seems like just yesterday I was the cool, hip dad dropping her off at middle school and all of her friends were like, oh my God, is that your older brother? He's so cute. <laughs> Look, I don't know that's what they said, all right? <laughs> I just saw them pointing and laughing. I just filled in the blanks. <laughs> anyway, fast forward, I take her to her uh, freshman orientation, right? And so I'm like wanting to be sensitive to the fact that, you know, she's with her dad. I'm like, is it okay being seen with your dad here? Is that cool? And she says, yeah, dad, it's totally fine. But just so you know, I've been introducing you as my mom's boyfriend. <laughs> so I said, what? Really? She's like, yeah, yeah, it's cooler, Dad. Trust me. And I said, oh, okay, no, that's fine. I'll play along. Um, while we're doing this, could you tell your art teacher that your mother and I are in an open relationship? I uh, just think polyamory is the next big thing. I want you to be ahead of the trends. All right, guys, give it up for your host, Anthony. <laughs> All right, Steve, thank you. I forgot to mention earlier about, what about Caitlyn Jenner lately, right? Heard about Caitlyn Jenner? No, you go, no, please, no, not Caitlyn, right? You know, my father, who's really conservative, he would I'd go, hey, Dad, what do you think of Caitlyn Jenner? And he gets this look on his face, real angry, real angry. And he goes, something must have happened to him. He must have got in an accident or something. And I go, well, he did get... In a, uh, in a car accident, and I go, he goes, car accident? He said, goddamn women drivers. <laughs> so I want to uh, say thanks to all the comedians tonight. We had Casey and Juan and Steve, and thanks for coming out to Marin Sanity, and I hope you have a great evening. Thank you. Yeah.